you spoke about the voices of young people and before giving the floor to the Secretary General to, to close his climate ambition summit, I now give the floor to Vishal Prasad from Fiji um, to give the perspective of young people. Mr. Secretary General and your excellencies, I, I speak to you today as a Pacific Islander and a youth. Someone who is from a region that has faced the relentless onslaught of climate change. We have seen rising sea levels like silent invaders swallow ancestral lands and homes, tearing apart the fabric of communities that have thrived for generations. We have seen the ferocity of tropical cyclones and hurricanes now more frequent and intense that leaves behind a trail of shattered lives and broken communities. We've seen our vibrant oceans lay bleached and lifeless, and we have seen the heart-wrenching goodbyes families have had to say as they left behind their homes, no longer inhabitable, no longer their home. Amidst this harrowing reality back home, young people have been calling for greater action, ambition, and accountability on the streets, in countless forums, and at negotiation tables, and before judges. But many times it appears that there are very few who genuinely share our worries, our fears and passions as the climate crisis rages on. It wreaks unimaginable damage and harm to our planet and our people. It is heartening to witness that among those who do stand with our youth, who share our worries and who are witnessing the climate crisis unfold before their very eyes, are the very countries that are at the front lines the small island developing states and those states most vulnerable among us are the heroes of our time. They are the custodians of wisdom that has been forged in the crucible of adversity and their resilience, determination and indomitable spirit inspires us all. But we need to see the same for the same world and it is frustrating that countries that have contributed the most to the climate crisis remain relatively silent absent in ambition, action, and accountability. The same level of ambition seen today by some of the world's smaller states needs to be replicated in capitals of all the developed nations to provide us a fighting chance against the climate crisis. It is here that a discussion on climate justice is so crucial. We know that people who are burdened to suffer the most from the climate crisis are in many of the poorest countries and many that did nothing to cause the problem. If I can just focus on young people in this regard, more than 85% of the world's youth live in the global south. And this underscores the magnitude of the impact of the climate crisis on the youth, who are not only our future leaders, but also our most vulnerable citizens, facing a world where the odds are unfairly stacked against them. Amidst this backdrop, young people are tired of half-hearted efforts and empty promises. Young people are demanding not only action, but accountability for the pledges and promises that we have heard and that we hope to hear. Importantly, these pledges and promises that we often hear must translate into policies and plans that actually materialize on the ground. As Pacific Islanders, we have witnessed some of the deadliest impacts of climate crisis that continues to become more frequent and intense. And here today, I cannot highlight enough the urgency of the situation that we find ourselves in. It is for this reason that young people from the Pacific and around the world have called on the International Court of Justice to issue an advisory opinion on climate obligations in relation to climate change. This request is about putting human rights at the center of climate, of climate change and action. It is about putting integrity and accountability back into our systems, and more importantly, about ratcheting our collective ambition for a safer and more secure future. We call on all UN member states to participate in making submissions to the ICJ, understanding that a strong legal clarity from the court could truly advance the pursuit of climate justice for all, particularly on ambition, action, and accountability. And as this summit concludes, there is now an even greater need for a united call and a more cohesive push towards our shared goals as we head into COP28, because we are already behind and the crisis that we are trying to address has had a huge head start. The work of this summit must springboard into further scaled ambition and action. As young people, we often call ourselves stubborn optimists. 
stubbornly determined to ensure that we are doing everything we can to fight for the future we want. Our hope is that this stubbornness and this resolve will be contagious and that countries and leaders will find within themselves the courage and the determination to also do all that they can in the face of this crisis. Vinaka and thank you.